Hey, my name's Teresa and we're here at Peter Moran Farm uh, with my dad, Jim, and Hi. we're going to show you how we've lived a comfortable, energy efficient, sustainable lifestyle for the last 20 years. First, we're going to look at our roof. Um, all of our hot water and electricity comes from the solar panels. And if it's rainy like today, uh, we kind of, we just heat water on a stove or have cold showers. <laughs> so basically when we moved here in 2000, we installed the solar electric panels. And usually, except under like extreme circumstances, we've produced more electricity than we use. Um, and all of the excess we send back to the general electricity grid. When we installed the system, solar panel was like 10 times more expensive. So we have what was considered a tiny system of only 640 watts. If you spend the same money today, you could buy a 6.5 kilowatt system. So despite on average per person consuming less than 1 20th of what an average Australian consumes with electricity, we've lived pretty comfortably. So the first step for this obviously is eliminating all high electricity using items. So we don't use any toasters or electric kettles or air conditioners or heaters or hair dryers or hair straighteners. <laughs> like none of the unnecessary items that just use heaps of electricity pretty much. Um, Dad's really anti hair straighteners and hair dryers and just like would take our hair straighteners that we'd snuck in the house and just like snap them in half and like leave them on the bed like make a statement like that or something. <laughs> so we also don't have a TV ever. Absolutely not. Dad has a whole rant that he does about that. But yeah, television, you're terrible, evil, <laughs> disgusting things. But don't worry about that. Yeah, if you want to be entertained, read a book. Or board games, that kind of thing. Play the guitar. Play the guitar. Yes. Mm. Terribly. Listen to some Bob Dylan songs on your record <laughs> player. A lot of it is all just like really simple things that um, make a big difference. So for example, our fridge is actually just a chest freezer um, where we've switched out the thermostat for a regular fridge one and this is because when you open a fridge all the cold air falls out and when you open a chest freezer it all sort of stays in because it's dropping to the bottom and not falling out the bottom and that actually saves heaps of electricity it actually uses less than one fifth of the electricity of a normal fridge this is our biogas stove which is all powered by our own waste this stove provides all our cooking needs for most of the year but in uh, some of the colder months, the methane producing bugs don't produce so much gas because they don't like the cold. And so then we light this wood stove over here, which uh, provides our cooking needs at night and uh, also heats the whole house. Now we just power this by um, a small proportion of the wattle trees that we planted here over the years. That's all the wood we need to uh, produce a bit of heat and cooking in winter. Okay, so we'll go down and show you guys the biogas digester, which is uh, the system that we run off to power the stove. Okay, right now I'm standing on our biogas digester. It's underneath here is a large eight cubic meter ferro cement dome enclosure. And uh, there are millions of biogas digesters like this in China and India and other places, uh, but not many in Australia, unfortunately. So um, all our vegetable and toilet scraps go down into this uh, dome area through these pipes here. And uh, that creates gas by an anaerobic process. When the gas is created, it forces the uh, liquid out the bottom and into this overflow tank here. And then it further flows down into these other tanks here, also covered with corrugated iron, 
And then you can gravity feed it to the garden or the fruit trees and you can grow beautiful bananas like we do here. And um, yeah, so back to the digester. When the gas is made, the pressure from the overflow tank in turn forces the gas up through this pipe and into your stove. So we've just had a whole heap of rain and of course all the grass has come through which is nice but then also a lot of weeds so Daz wants to be happy about that. <laughs> so a lot of fruit and veggies right from our garden and the trees. Homegrown bananas taste a million times better than store-bought ones. So this is our, um, our laundry and our washing machine and uh, we've always used twin tub washing machines because they save a lot of electricity, don't use a whole lot and also they're very um, good recyclers of water so we can just put the water back in. I actually have done six loads of washing uh, in one lot of water in these machines, saving the dirty ones for last of course. And we've had seven children in cloth nappies just using a twin tub washing machine. Okay, so we do have a car. We're not completely Amish. Um, <laughs> since 2002, all of our cars have run on either homemade biodiesel or straight used cooking oil. So dad converted his latest twin cab ute uh, by buying a kit online from an amazing German company called Elsbit or Grease Energy. It's pretty easy to convert. It just, uh, and it pays for itself in a few months with all the money you save on petrol or diesel. So they run pretty smoothly. Um, this one actually has done 30,000 kilometers on used cooking oil. Uh, yeah, I'll show you how simple it is to um, filter it. Uh, for the veggie oil to put in your car. Yeah, so uh, just behind us here now is all the drums of uh, used cooking oil you get for restaurants, cafes. I get uh, ours from a winery up the road and a local pub downtown and a friend's cafe in the city. And I go in there. And uh, it's simply filtered through two filters. Pour it in up the top here. And in that drum there is a five micron sock filter and the oil gets filtered through that, goes right down to the bottom of this drum so that all the, any, if there's any water or other contaminants, they'll all sink down the bottom. And then the oil at the top uh, then goes through this pipe into a one micron filter in this other big drum here. So most uh, cars run on only about five micron filter anyhow, so that just shows you how filtered it is. And this is turn is then gravity fed down to these big drums down here and then we can put it straight into our car from those drums. So underneath this pink um, bit of plastic here which covers our pump for the, from the rain, there's a little um, electric pump which we use to uh, get the fuel out of these drums, big drums. Turn it on here and use our nozzle just like at the service station. Put it straight into your car. So we survive uh, purely on rainwater here and uh, all of the rainwater is pumped up to that header tank by the rusty old windmill, which has been surviving for a long, 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 long time. Over 50 years, that windmill. Um, and which is then gravity fed, uh, no energy, gravity fed, into the house. Uh, here we are at our parabolic cooker. Now this is just our parabolic dish that was a satellite dish at one stage that we um, just converted by putting mirrors, gluing mirrors to it. And uh, the mirrors are pointed in that one direction where the pot is there that you can see. And you can boil water very quickly or even bake bread, which is what we're uh, about to do now. Here it is in our little pot. Pot and the other. Point the dish back in the right direction. In the sun. Well, here we are now, a bit over an hour later on this 
day in the middle, a sunny day in the middle of winter in Brisbane. We have a baked loaf of bread. Lift off the whole oven. And there it is, a beautiful loaf of bread. All done. There we have it. But uh, I'd like to point out that the biggest change we have to make other than these technical changes, which are really quite simple in comparison, is a change of attitude. We need to realise that we don't need all the mod cons of so-called Western civilization to be happy. We just need to live simply so that all may simply live.